So following on from the previous two videos, we now need to look at, look at a case where, where p doesn't equal 1. So we now need to look at a case where p does not equal 1. So our normal routine would be to integrate it from b to a half and then allow b to head towards 0 from the, from the right hand side. So now, now it really boils down to us trying to integrate this. Um, but, but before we integrate it, visualize this thing here as, as this multiplying with, um, with a negative version of this thing here. So, so visualize, visualize this thing here as, as this. So it's like me, it's like me giving you this. Let, let's just imagine here, p equals 5. So let's imagine p equals 5. So this thing here is like me asking you to integrate this. x, um, a natural log of x to the power of 5. So, so when you come to integrate this, Visualize it, visualize it as 1 over x, so that's this bit here, and then multiply with a natural log of, uh, of x to the power of minus 5. So that's, that's this bit here. Okay, so, so now when, when you come to integrate this, when you come to integrate this, it will be, it will be 1 notch higher than this, so make this to be your initial guess, natural log of x to the power of uh, one notch higher than this, so that would be negative four. Now, if, if you were to differentiate this, so make this to be your initial guess. So, if you were to differentiate this, it would then give you, um, it, it, it would then give you uh, the four goes down here, so negative four, uh, and then natural log of x, and then this thing here gets minus by one, so that would be negative five, and then you've got to times the the derivative of the bubble itself, one over x. You see, this now matches up with this. Uh, sorry, this now matches up with uh, with this, and then uh, this thing here matches up with this. But you don't you don't want this negative four, so you would need to go back to your initial guess and then negate that that negative four. So so that would be you doing this negative four. So so the point is that when you um, when you integrate this, when you try and integrate this, visualize it as this in your mind. In your mind, visualize it as one thing multiplying another thing. So when you come to integrate it, when you come to integrate it, it will be this thing one. It will be one notch higher. So one notch higher will be this thing plus one. So uh, so one notch higher. But then you also need to negate that thing. So so it'd be one over this exact same thing. So the point here is that when you integrate this, it will then give you this. So now put a half in there. Hang on. Put your half into here, so that will then give you this, and then uh, put your put your b into here, that will then give you this. So overall, it will equal this. Now, um, uh, this thing here is going to be a number. It's going to come to a definite number. Uh, this thing here is a constant. So now it really boils down to us uh, trying to evaluate if this is going to converge or if it's, or if this is going to to diverge. So if you imagine, let's let's say suppose p here is um, let, let let's say suppose p is um, let hang on, let's let's go back here. So looking at this here, looking at this here, suppose p is a uh, a, a positive number. Let's just imagine it to be three. Let let's say p is a positive number. So if p here is a positive number, positive number three. So, um, so p, remember p is a positive number. This is a negative, it has nothing to do with our p. This our p here, we are now looking at a case where p equals 3. So this thing here is going to be 3. So 1 take away 3 would be negative 2. So you've got natural law of b to the power of negative 2. So whenever you see this here, you can imagine as 1 over natural law of b squared. Now look at this, take the limit as b um, as b tends to zero. So if you look at the uh, the uh, uh, the natural log of b graph, it will look something like this. As b heads towards zero, it's going to be a very very the negatively large number, and then you square it, it's going to become an even bigger number. So one divided by a very very big number, this thing here is going to head towards zero. Okay, so so this here will converge when when p. So so when p when p is when p is uh, is greater than then one is going to converge, and then you can use the same argument for for b for p being less than less than one. So uh, so to answer this question here, um, the integral would diverge if p is uh, is less than 
1 uh, or, or equal to 1 and it will converge if p is greater uh, greater than 1. So this thing here will converge, the integral here will converge if, um, if p is greater than 1. Just because of this bit here, just because of this bit here, just because of this bit here. Um, if, if you think about it, if, if, if you put 3 into the p, then, then it's going to give you a natural law of b to, to the power of negative 2. The minute you have this thing, you, you jump to this, natural log of b, and then uh, uh, squared. And then this thing here is going to become very, very big. 1 divided by very, very big. It's going to, this thing here is going to head towards 0. And then use the same argument for, for the case of when, well, uh, I, I, well, I hope that will answer your question. Okay? So this is your final answer here.